Episode 11 of Hell's Paradise was a little wacky. Imagine Rick and Morty bug style characters, humanoid men with bug insects for faces trying to kidnap a little girl for some <laughs> bedroom fun if I'm keeping it PG. And I know some of my subscribers can be a bit degenerate, so I'm here to tell you that this episode is not about you guys fulfilling your dark, twisted fantasies, you sick dogs. This video is only just to build upon the last video that I made about Hell's Paradise, which was discussing Tao and the interesting power system that I believe is so cool. Believe it or not, the two topics actually fall into each other. So if you guys like videos like this, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and share with a friend. Listen, you guys are viewing the videos and you guys are not liking, and it's breaking my heart, guys. You guys are breaking my heart. Would you guys want me to be homeless, man? I'm putting everything in on this, man. So if you guys don't want to see a homeless zen, man, just leave a like, comment, subscribe. Not too hard, guys. But without further ado, let's get into this video. So far on Shinsen Kyo, which is the mystical island that is being explored in Hell's Paradise, or Jigoku Raku, as the Japanese like to call it, we've seen a plethora of different characters and mystical beings that exist within the island. We have the Hoko, which are wood style group looking characters who are native to the island. We're not going to get into their story too much. We also have the Tenzin, who rule over the island. We also have the Soshin, who are godlike animal hybrid humanoid creatures that are not very sentient and are not very smart. These Soshin are controlled by the Doshi. The Doshin are who this video are all about. They are attendants of the Tenzin and they also study Tao. This is their sole purpose, studying and mastering the five steps of Tao. The two bug-faced men that I refer to are Doshin, and as far as the show that we know, I believe that there are five Doshin that were on the island that were employed to watch over our main characters of the show. The Doshin are wicked powerful, man. Every character that they run into, we see that because of their mastering of Tao, they are a level above most of the characters that we were initially introduced to. However, since the characters are finally starting to understand what Tao is and its usage, they are quickly catching up to the Doshin in power level. Remember guys, the Doshin control the Soshin and the Tenzin oversee everyone on the island so the Doshin are weaker than even yes the Tenzin. In episode 11, Gabi Maro and the Blade Dragon, whose name is Tamiya Gantetsusai. Sorry guys, that name is really hard, so I'm just going to refer to him as the Blade Dragon from now on. He's the one-armed samurai at this point in the show. Gabumaro the Hollow and the Blade Dragon get into a fight with two of the Doshin, and they reveal this false Kishikai form. If you watch so far into Hell's Paradise, you understand that the Tenzin have a Kishikai form, which seems to be their most powerful form. The Doshin also have a form called the false Kishikai form, alluding to the fact that this form is not as powerful because it is a false version of what is known to be a full version which the Tenzin can perform. There's also information disclosed explaining that there are five steps to mastering Tao and one can only assume that because the Doshin have a false Kishikai form is because they haven't mastered all five steps. And this is where Mei comes in and this is where it gets creepy guys so I need you guys to pay attention. The five steps to mastering Tao are as follows. Doin, Taisoku, Shuitsu, Shuten, and Boku Jutsu. Doin involves training through physical exercise which aims at improving better Tao circulation. Taisoku involves training through breathing techniques. Reminds me a lot of Demon Slayer, but anyway, I digress. Let's move on. Shuitsu involves training through meditation. Shuten involves training through pathways of the body and organs. And Boku Jutsu involves training through sexual intimacy. Yes, sexual intimacy, guys. That's what it's for. Boku Jutsu literally translates to art of the bedchambers. I'm so tired of anime that's meant to be for children just forcing all of this crazy adult style content on our kids like what if one day my kid is just watching hell's paradise you know what if i have a little kid doo -doo 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 -doo, little zen jr and he's watching hell's paradise and then i didn't know that boku jutsu was going to be in here and now my kid is studying the art of the bed chambers like isn't that crazy guys this training method is said to be the most important since it requires a partner of the opposite chi by joining in intercourse the chis of both yin and yang will join and strengthen the two partners tao boku jutsu can also be used to understand a person's tao at a deeper level according to rien Cooperation is essential to the partner's behalf in order for Boku Jutsu to take full effect. Therefore, the two practitioners have to take each other's pleasures into account in order to have harmony. If anyone doesn't know who Rien is, he's one of the lead Lord Tenzin. We haven't actually been introduced to him yet, but in the end of episode 11, he's the guy that cuts off Hoko's head. So to give you guys better context in the story, Mei is of relation to the Tenzin. She's not a Tenzin exactly because she doesn't have both forms of hybridification, meaning she only has the humanoid form of a woman. However, she can fluctuate in age 
age from a little girl to an adolescent woman. However, it is stated that she shares the same origin as the Tenzin. In Hell's Paradise, it is stated that the Yang form of energy is male while the Yin form of energy is female. Tenzins have both Yin and Yang. This is why they're able to freely switch between male and female forms. So the two Doshin that come to attack and see that Gabimaru and crew are with Mei are so surprised because they've been looking for her for almost a century. She was banished from Horai because she was an imperfect Tenzin unable to fully complete her Tao. She was given the choice of either staying and helping the Doshin complete their Tao or, or being banished from Horai and living a worthless life. She chooses to run away showing she clearly was not trying to master any bed chambers with these bug-faced men. I find that interesting that they're still chasing her and trying to use her to perfect their Tao because as it's clearly stated the two practitioners have to have an equal amount of harmony and pleasure given to each other in order to perfect the Tao in the best way. However, Mei doesn't seem too enthusiastic with perfecting her Tao with these guys, so I don't think that would give for the best perfected Tao. However, it's still very early in the show and we don't know much about this power system of Tao and I'm sure there's going to be a lot more wrenches and loopholes thrown in. It's just a very exciting power system and it's so interesting. Kind of reminds me a lot of Baki when they were telling him that the best way for him to be the best fighter is to, you know, sleep with his girl. It was a little weird, but I'm sure they're going to bring it all full circle for us. Side note, it seems that Fat Armor or whatever aside, a lot of these main characters that we were first introduced to are learning how to master Tao, so that's good because they're advancing the plot. Namely, Aza Chobe, the Bandit Mountain King, and Gabimaru, of course. Like, they're literally naturals at Tao. So quickly, they've been able to regenerate and even defeat Doshin who are really supposed to be on a whole nother level from human beings altogether. I wanted to get into the character of Mei and what her origins and connections to the Tenzin might mean but I know that that's going to produce a lot of spoilers for us so in the interest of not spoiling the show and letting everyone just watch we will put that video up in a couple of weeks or a couple episodes later. But thank you for watching guys. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe. You better hit that like button guys. And remember to as always find your zen, your final form. I'll see you next time guys. Boom back like karma, Benny Hanna, Gucci with the Prada. But I take gold, so we ride Dolce and Gabbana. And I change clothes like my hoes, I love designer. And I change my flows like who knows, I want the commas. Uh -huh.